All right, so we've been on series. In fact, this is the sixth part of the series, and um, we've been talking about why did God do that? Everybody say, why did God do that? And we're trying to answer some questions about this and that can be, bring confusion to people. But as always, you have to have ears to hear. Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. A lot of people don't have ears to hear. In fact, they pay very little attention or as far as adjusting their life to it. And some of them think, well, I went to, you know, this is not the way we believed it in our church. That's not what I think. That's what not I was taught. Well, really, none of that matters. What matters is what does the Bible say? Everybody say, what does the Bible say? And so I'm trying to present truth to you from the Bible that will help you so you can understand some things. A lot of things are, are taught and then a lot of things are caught <clears throat> that we grow up thinking that are really not true. And when you start looking at what the Scripture really says about it, it can enlighten you, it can help you in your faith, and it will certainly make your life uh, more productive for the kingdom of God because if we know the truth, the truth sets us free. So everybody said out loud in the name of Jesus. I have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand. I'll be taught the Word of God. I'm going to receive it. It's going to help me and strengthen me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm going to pray. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus for giving me utterance, giving me the right words to say. You're the creator. Jesus is the head of the body. Uh, my body goes wherever my head says. So I thank you as the head for leading and guiding me and helping me to speak what you want me to say. Give us understanding and revelation. Thank you, and we'll give you praise and glory for all the fruit that's born in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed with the prayer said, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And then in verse 16, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. So we know that God is love, and we say that, but for people who have studied the Bible very much, a lot of things then come up when you say that. Like why would a loving God have uh, one of the prophets, the children are teasing him and calling him bald-headed, and uh, he turns around and curses the kid, the kids, and uh, two she-bears come out of the woods and maul to death 42 kids. Everybody say, God is love. Well, it don't really sound too much like it. Then you have other incidents that we talked about, and you just have to go back. This is our sixth part. But there are a lot of things like that that, that can be very confusing. And um, so really what we found out, and, and I'm just going to kind of do a synopsis here as we get back over to what we need to hit tonight. <clears throat> but this period of time when it was so, so strict and so harsh, where a man was stoned to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day to warm himself, and even Moses didn't even know if that was work. And yet he goes to God, and God says, yeah, stone him to death. Well, this period of time was under a period of time called the law, and it was a 1,600-year period of time that started in the book of Exodus and went through Malachi, which is most, it's 38 of the Old Testament books, which there's 39 of them. But it was a 1,600-year period of time before that was the book of Genesis, it was a 2,400-year period of time. And the reason the law was given, it was given to actually restrain sin. And uh, the Bible says in Galatians 3.19, wherefore then serveth the law. It was added. Everybody say added. Because of transgressions till, which means until, the seed should come to whom the promise was made. It was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. Galatians 3.24 says that it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So it was, it was added, the purpose was to restrain sin through the fear of punishment. Same reason that you would spank a toddler now. They may not understand all the dangers of what they do. And so if they're sticking their, you know, a piece of metal into an electric socket, you may not be able to explain to them all about electricity and get them to understand that, but you can explain to them if I see you doing that again, you're getting two swats on your butt. And they will resist something that is dangerous and hurtful, not because they understand it, but because they understand the fear of punishment. And that was the reason that the law was given, but it was a temporary measure until Christ could come, atone for man's sins, and God's laws could be in our heart. In fact, in Hebrews 9, notice how it explains this. For the ceremonies, or the things that were happening, all of these washings and all the things going on in the Old Testament, 
Deal only with clean and unclean meats and drinks and different washings. <clears throat> External rules and regulations for the body imposed to tide the worshipers over until the time of setting things straight, of reformation. Everybody say reformation. Well, what do you mean? Well, he explains. The complete new order. Everybody say new order. So, so the law, this, all of these ceremonies, all of this law that was given was, just like it says in Galatians, till the seed should come. The, the time of setting things straight or the time of reformation, the complete new order when Christ the Messiah shall establish the reality of what these things foreshadow. So a lot of these things were foreshadows and people don't even know it and they're, they're worshiping the shadow instead of the reality. But it was a foreshadow of things to come, notice what it says, a better covenant. Back up, back up to verse 10 again. Everybody say a better covenant. So the time of reformation, the time of Jesus Christ, he brought in a better covenant. So then now go on to verse 11. But that appointed time came when Christ the Messiah appeared as high priest of the better things that have come and are to come. How do you know there's still some more good stuff to come? through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with human hands, not a part of this material creation. He went once for all into the holy of holies of heaven, not by virtue of the blood of goats and calves, by which to make reconciliation between God and man, but he went in with his own blood, having found and secured a complete redemption and everlasting release for us. So Jesus came, the time of reformation, everything's been reformed, so God's not the same way. Things have changed since the old covenant in God's dealings with man. Right and wrong haven't changed. Murder is still wrong. The things that it listed that were wrong, some of the things were ceremonial things that were fulfilled in Christ. But the law of human behavior hasn't changed. But God deals with us through mercy because Jesus atoned, he atoned for our sins. Can I get an amen from you? And so now God offers us mercy. So that was kind of what we spent several weeks on. And then we started on this last week and we're gonna try to get right back into this because I didn't get really finished with it, and I wanted to try and explain some more about it. We got into this. If God is good and God is love, why did God make the devil? Everybody say, why did God make the devil? Now, I mean, if you've studied the New Testament, particularly, you find out that uh, the devil is our adversary, 1 Peter 5, 8. Your adversary, the devil, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, uh, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, I mean, why would God create an enemy and put him down here that's our adversary and his, he goes around seeking people that he may devour? Everybody saying, why did God do that? So, so, so these things have to be answered here. We find out in Ephesians 6, he tells us, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You, you should know that scripture, but against principalities and powers. I'm in, I'm in uh, Ephesians, but don't worry about it. You can just stay where you're at. He said, you know, we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We got all this conflict going on. Why in the world? Would God create a devil and have all of these evil spirits down here on the earth and we've got, we, we have to deal with them. They tempt, they try, uh, they're, they're sneaky, there's wiles of the devil. He's our adversary. Why in the world would God make the devil and put him down here? So we kind of got into this, but there are some things that we said about it. And so we looked over here at Ezekiel chapter 28. So we're going to get up there now. Ezekiel 28, I'm going to, Flip over there. I think I can read it better here than, than I can there. Ezekiel chapter 28, and we're going to look at this. Um, verse 13 says it this way. Now, he's talking about Tyrus, a king, but you can tell when you read this that there is another being that's ruling the king. So here in Ezekiel 28, it says in verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, this king that he's talking about was never in Eden, the garden of God. The garden of God, Eden, was destroyed by the time of Adam and Eve before they left. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardas, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper and the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold and golden and workmanship of your tabrays 
and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covers, and I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. So this is talking about Lucifer, the fallen angel. He was perfect in the day that he was created until iniquity was found in him. He chose to rebel. Somebody once asked, said, why is there no redemption for the devil? I mean, he sinned against God. Adam sinned against God. God had a plan to redeem humanity. Why didn't he save? Why didn't he do anything about the devil? Because the devil didn't have the devil to tempt him. He didn't have any outside force tempting and trying him. The devil came to Adam and Eve. He lied to Eve. He deceived her. Are you here? He questioned God. He brought this pressure. Well, the devil didn't have that. He was, per he was perfect in the way he was created. He knew God. He was, he was this amazing being, as we'll, we'll continue to read and find out. But I mean, he was something. It says he was perfect in the day that he was created till iniquity was found in him. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee out as profane out of the mountain of God, and will destroy thee, O covering cherub, cherub is a type of angel, from the midst of the stones of fire. What happened? Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I'll cast you to the ground, and I'll lay you before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of you, and it shall devour you, and I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. So, so this is talking about a being that exalted himself because of his beauty. It says his tabrets were in him. Uh, apparently, he, every, every beautiful stone was part of his being. He, he, could, uh, he had music that would come forth from his being. He didn't play electric piano or the guitar or the synthesizer. He had all that in him. And he was stunningly beautiful, apparently. And he got in pride. And you can see over here, you know, we were reading in Ezekiel, but notice what it says in Isaiah. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart. Now, this always gets me when I read this. You have said in your heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Notice, I will be like the most high. What? What is he doing? I'm going to ascend. I'm going to be like God. I'm, go I'm going to be I'm going to be on the sides of the north. I'm going to be like God. What is he doing? He's trying to use God's creative principles of how God created everything God said and God saw. He's trying to take that principle that he learned from God and he's trying to say, I'm going to be like God. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to, my throne is going to be risen up. And yet when he said that, his words ran up against somebody else's words, the words of God. And let me tell you what, that's not a good fight to get into. It says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that look upon you shall narrowly look upon you and consider you saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? Who? Lucifer, son of the morning. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Is this the one that did that? And so you, you see this... Uh, talking about Lucifer and he was a being that was created. He was perfect. He rebelled against God. He got into pride and said, I'm going to be like the most high God. Um, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? And he said, I will exalt my throne. Well, so apparently he had a throne. He had a throne. Well, where was his throne? And now, as, as I'm saying all this, listen to me. 
We don't know everything about the devil. We don't know everything about demons. The only information we have is what God wanted us to have. Are you here? And so he gave us enough information that we can deal with the devil, but he didn't tell us all about, well, were there other angels that had thrown somewhere else? We don't know. We don't know about all this stuff. All we can deal with is look at the facts that we can see and, we ha and he gave us enough information and Jesus showed us how to deal with these things that we can deal with it. But we don't know all the truth about it. I'm not telling you I do and I know for sure you don't and neither does anybody else because God didn't explain everything. He just gave us enough information for us to know how to deal with the things that we need to deal with. Are you here? So... He said, I will exalt my throne. Well, where was his throne? Well, I believe his throne was on earth. And he said, I'm going to exalt my throne like the stars of heaven. And I believe that he ruled a kingdom that was on earth. And you remember what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10? He said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. He tried to re re do a revolt against God. And he got booted out, and then his kingdom on earth, his throne on earth was judged. And I believe that this took place before the time of Adam. And so, to me, that's what makes sense. I believe he was cast out, and the creation that he ruled on the earth was judged. In my opinion, this is my opinion, you can take it, you can leave it, I believe that answers a lot of reasons, things for me that tell me uh, where did dinosaurs come from? Where, how come they dig up some, something that is huge dinosaur? Well, I don't think it's been here from the time of Adam. Now, from the time of Adam until now, we know it's about 6,000 years. You can track back the genealogy. But I don't know how long the earth was here before Adam. And I believe there was a creation that Satan ruled over and he had a throne. We know that he did. And he tried to exalt his throne above the throne of God and he was judged and cast down. And the creation that rebelled with him, these people are now, just like Satan, they're disembodied. And so they're spirit beings. And, to, and that's where I believe demons come from. Now, some people say that, that demon spirits... Why is that? Why has the world got all these demons? Why was Jesus having to catch? Where in the world did they come from? Well, I believe they're part of the creation that was here and that they were not always just in spirit form. I believe they had a body of some kind and that that was judged. They died and that body died and they were loosed then on the planet. And so now the planet is infested with these evil spirits or demons. I don't believe that they were angels. You say, what? I had somebody tell me, well, no, evil spirits are angels. Okay, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter 2 verse 4. If God spared not the angels, that what? But cast them down to where? He cast them down to hell. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So I don't believe that evil spirits, and from any dealings that I've had with demons and evil spirits, and I've had some, they're not angels. When Paul talks about these, these spirits, he, he, he lists them in, in rank. Principalities, that's the lowest. They're almost like a bug. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. They all have different levels of authority, understanding. The rulers of the darkness of this world are, are wise and they can possess people and then you have spiritual wickedness in the high places. But I believe that these were these disembodied spirits from the world that was before Adam. I'm not going to be dogmatic about it. I don't know for sure, so don't get mad at me. If you think the earth is only 6,000 years old, hallelujah. I don't care. Maybe you're right about it. But to me, it answers a whole lot of questions. I mean, have you looked... How did we get landing strips on the planet when, you, when, I mean, if you've done any kind of research, there's places out there that look like landing strips that we didn't build and we didn't even know about till we start getting up 
and flying over the planet, and we start saying, well, how in the world would that be there? And if they dig, you know, if they dug up some kind of something that had a skeleton and looked like this or that or the other, would that freak me out? If they landed a flying saucer on, on the courthouse in Decatur and beams got out, I wouldn't care. I would just believe they came from the creation that was before. Maybe they escaped the planet. And they'll still bow the knee to the name of Jesus. I don't care. Are you here? But we don't know everything about this, but it explains to me, it makes sense to me that that's why we have these evil spirits that are on the planet and it seems to be infested with it. Amen or oh me? Okay, so you just learn or, or just not. Okay, so it brings me to the second point. Why doesn't God do something about the devil now? Well, in Genesis chapter 1, go back over there. We're going to have to tie this together. Genesis 1, beginning in verse 26, you should know this. So here's God. He's creating man in his own image, I believe. So there was judgment, and then there was darkness on the face of the earth. That was a result of the judgment. Then God started over with creation and said, light be, and he's going to give somebody else dominion over this planet. Who's he going to give it to? Another being. Who is it? Adam. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth. Over how much of the earth? Over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. You could say there is one species, mankind, and there's two, there's two uh, genders, male and female. One species, two genders, male and female. There's not five genders. There's not 157 genders. Amen. There's two. Everybody say, God created them, male and female. That's all there is. If you believe anything else than that, you're a half wit. All right. 28, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And what are you doing? What are you doing about the earth? <laughs> Excuse me. Replenish. Everybody say replenish. Well, you can't replenish something that's never been plenished. Remember, I talked about my, what did I talk about being replenished last week? Tootsie Rolls. I told my wife, hey, you better replenish my Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> so God said, we're going to make man in our image. He said, you need to replenish the earth and you need to subdue it and you need to have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, so on and so forth. So he gave mankind dominion. All right. So in Genesis 2, verse 2, listen to this. On the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had made. So we know that God, God created the earth. He worked for six days during this recreation of the earth or, or replenishing of the earth for six days, and then he rested on the seventh day. Okay, so, so why doesn't God do something about the devil now? Well, we know that here's what I believe about it. And I've, you know, there are some other scholars that believe this. I'm not claiming to be a scholar, but there is a earth lease that God gave dominion to mankind for a 6,000 year period of time, six days. And on the seventh day will be the millennial reign of Christ because a day with the Lord is as a, and a thousand years is as a day. Now, that's, I, that I know in one way that's saying that God is eternal. He stands outside of time. But these, I believe you can go to the book of Genesis and you can kind of see God's entire plan. So I believe for six days or 6,000 years that Adam had dominion on the earth and in the 7,000 year, Christ is going to come back and he's going to rule for a thousand years. So when Adam sinned, he turned his dominion on the earth in Luke chapter 4, right? Luke 4, did I give that? I don't think I gave it. Look, look at Luke 4. So here's the temptation of Jesus. The devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power, that's a Greek word, exousia, which means authority, will I give you and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. 
Well, who delivered it to him? Adam did. Adam committed treason against God. And Adam delivered the dominion over the whole planet to the devil. So I believe for a 6,000 year period of time, the devil has a right to be down here. He has a right. And, and that explains a whole lot of other things like in Luke chapter 8. Look at Luke 8. Okay, as they were sailing, he fell asleep. And Well, is that where I wanted to go? I don't know if that's where I wanted to go. Um, that's not where I wanted to go. Let's go to Matthew 8. Matthew 8, that's where I want to go. Matthew 8, verse 28. Did I give you all the wrong verse? I want verse 28, Matthew. No, I want Matthew 8, 28 through 32. All right. When he was come to the other side of the country of the Gerasenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they, these evil spirits inside these possessed people, cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, our son of God? Are you come here to torment us before the time? They know there is a time. And there was a good way off from them, a herd of, of many swine feeding. So the devils that were inside this man besought him saying, if you cast us out, allow us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently, violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Well, now, okay. Why, why did Jesus let him go into the herd of swine? I mean, do you ever think about these things? What I think about is, why didn't he say, uh, because he was possessed with, with all of these demon spirits, and they said, let us, let us go into the herd of swine. Why didn't Jesus say, no, you go into the pit. You get out of this planet. Go to hell. Why, why didn't he do that? And they wouldn't have been here. Because he, can, he let them go in the swine. The swine run and drowned. As soon as their bodies are dead, th these things are loose again on the planet. Why, why didn't he just make them leave the planet and go? Because I believe they have, for about a 6,000 year period of time, they have a right to be here and that you can't cast them out. I've heard preachers say, well, I'm going to cast you out and you go to hell. Well, they're not, they're not going. They have a right to be here on the planet or Jesus would have cast them out and commanded them to go into hell. But he didn't do that. He just made them leave people or they can be an animal sometimes. I mean, if you have a cat, be very careful. But anyway, I just thought I'd bring it up. Sorry. But, but these disembodied spirits, they, they want to have expression in the world. And so that's why they try to be inside a human body or they try to be inside some type of animal. And you can't just make them leave the planet. Jesus didn't. He allowed them to stay even in that region. And that's why you'll find in certain places there'll be a, a maybe way more demonic activity than there is somewhere else because people yield to them and give place to them, and so that's exactly where they want to be. Can I get an amen from you? All right, so, so they have a right to be here in the earth, I believe, for this 6,000-year period of time. What happens? Okay, at the end of the 6,000-year period of time, what happens when Jesus comes back? What's the first thing he does? He sends an angel, chains up the devil, and throws him into a bottomless pit. All of a sudden, he's gone off the planet. Are you here? How come? Hit. That time's up. You don't have any more rights to be down here. And so at the end of that 6,000 year period of time, boom, he goes into the pit. He's going to be there until he's loose for a little while to tempt some of the people who were here and didn't ever have to make a choice. So that's why I believe God doesn't do anything about the devil right now. He has a right to be here on the planet. Third thing is this. I've got to hurry up. Listen to me. Why does God allow evil? Why does God allow evil? Well, he allows evil because of Adam's sin. Adam sinned. 
and he gave dominion on the planet to a mad dog called the devil, and the devil tries to find people that he can give power and influence and money to so they can influence the world, and he can use them to bring evil into the world. And so they have a right to be here, and people have a right to choose. You know, people have a right to choose. And so, because he didn't make us to be robots, and he gave hu humans the right to choose, there's going to be evil down here. We live in a fallen world. In Luke chapter 8, notice this right here. Luke 8, verse 23. And as they were sailing, he fell asleep, and a fierce gale of wind swept down as if through a wind tunnel on the lake, and they began to be swamped and were in great danger. They came to Jesus and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we're about to die he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging violent waves and they ceased and it, it became calm, a perfect peacefulness. So they're in, out in the sea. There's some kind of wind tunnel. Maybe it was a tornado on the wind, uh, on the waves. We don't know what happened, but it was, it was sinking them on the ship. They woke up Jesus and Jesus didn't say, boys, let's just, let's just grab hands because this must be the will of God because God controls everything on the planet and I guess he wants us all to die today. Is that what he said? No. You know that God controls the storms. He controls the wind and he controls the waves. Everything is under the control of God. Is it? No. Jesus got up. Here's a storm. And he, he, he rebuked the storm. He rebuked the wind. He commanded the wind to stop because everything that happens in the planet is not the will of God. We live in a fallen world. Satan is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. A lot of the things that have happened were because of the fall of man and the, the whole cosmos, the earth. I mean, God didn't create the planet to have violent tornadoes and floods and hurricanes and earthquakes. It wasn't that way until sin entered into the world. But now we're in a fallen world and we have these things that we have to deal with. And there may be times when there is a hurricane and floods and all these things, but you know, you, you can pray when it's coming to your house, you can do something about it. Amen? Now, sometimes you have to use common sense. I mean, uh, I, and if, you, if, if that is something that's headed your way, I mean, you, God gives you common sense to get out of the way. But I mean, sometimes if you're in an emergency, you, can, you have to do what Jesus did. Speak to the wind. Speak to the waves. You, you have authority. You follow Jesus' example because in that same story, he turned to his disciples and says, where's your faith? Inferring, you should have done something about this. I was sleeping good. <laughs> Are you here? So, so no, it's everything that happens is not the will of God. Why in the world, if everything's the will of God, why would Jesus say, uh, you know, uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Why would you have to pray for the will of God to be done on earth if it was automatic? If everything that happens on the planet, that, 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 is, that is totally wrong. Everything that happens on the planet is not the will of God. He doesn't control everything that happened. Has he controlled everything you ever did? Oh, now we're getting down now, aren't we? He controlled everywhere you ever went? Did he control everything you ever said? Had he controlled your life, everything you ever did? No. No. He's not controlling everything everybody else is doing either. And you have people that yield to the devil, make wrong choices, decide to yield to the enemy, and they bring all kinds of tragedy and calamity into the world. But thank God we can make a better choice than that. Can I get an amen? amen. I know I got to close. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. 
in that, you know, you know, people have choices in life. They have life and good, or they have death and evil. Well, how, how does he give us that choice? Here's how he does it. In that, I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways. If you love the Lord your God and walk in his ways, you get life and good. and you keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land where, the, where you go to possess it. But if your heart turn away and there are multitudes on the planet, their hearts turned away and, you, and they do not hear, but you shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them or do your own thing and make yourself your God. I denounce unto you this day that you'll perish and you shall not prolong your days upon the land whether you go over Jordan to go and to possess it. So I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, shh, what, what are you supposed to do? So, so you mean you can make choices in life that are gonna be cause blessing or cursing? Well, I thought just God controlled everything. Well, well, if he controls everything, then, then what do your choice have to do with it? No, he's not controlling everything you did. He's not controlling everything everybody else did. He wasn't controlling Adolf Hitler. You know who controlled Adolf Hitler? The devil. Are you here? But he said, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life that both you and your seed may live. It's going to affect you. You know your choices affect your kids? Man, they do. They affect everything. But the good news is you can choose life. You can choose blessing. You can choose God. You can do what James said, submit to God, resist the devil. You can choose to submit to God. You can choose to resist the devil. Because that's how you were created. Can I get an amen from you? Amen. All right, stand up on your feet. I've said before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. I've said before you this day, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. Choose life. What, what are you choosing? Choose life. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to choose life. He wants you to choose life. How? In that you submit to the Lord your God. That's what you do. You choose life. Is that the choice you make? Say this out loud. In the name of Jesus, I choose to submit to God and to resist the devil. I choose to walk in the ways of God. I choose to receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I choose life. I choose submission to God. I choose life and life more abundantly because I choose Jesus. I choose to be obedient. I choose to serve God. I choose the ways of God. Hallelujah. I choose life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord some praise for that. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. All right, I love you. Jesus loves you. We will see you Sunday morning. Hallelujah.